7.4% unemployment rate in 2007 became an 8.1% unemployment rate in 2008, a 10% unemployment rate in 2009, a 10.8% unemployment rate in 2010, an 11.2% unemployment rate in 2011, and an estimated 12.2% unemployment rate at the end of June 2012. A 12.2% unemployment rate approximates one in nine persons in the Barbadian labor force being out of work. Now, in my own state of North Carolina, there is approximately a 10% unemployment rate at the moment, which is one of the higher unemployment rates in the United States. But among the black population of the state, the unemployment rate approaches 20%, which means that one in five black Americans in the state of North Carolina are jobless. This is a very dramatic and difficult situation, in part because of the relationship between unemployment and poverty. Rising unemployment rates typically signal rising poverty rates. Uh, courtesy of uh, Professor Andrew Downs, I was able to get some information about the, the current state of estimated poverty in Barbados. And uh, this, this data is drawn from the survey of living conditions, which uh, involve the interviewing on a regular basis of 3,000 households and approximately 6,600 individuals. Uh, what was learned in the most recent study, which was taken in 2010, that about 15% of Barbadian households are poor, which constitutes approximately uh, 14,800 households, and 19.3% of individuals are poor, which would be approximately uh, 50,000 people throughout Barbados. Uh, now, what, what, what's the standard that's used for identifying this poverty line? By adjusting the standard that was used in earlier studies, uh, upward for inflation that had taken place between 1996 and 2010, the approximate poverty line for Barbados would be 8,000 Barbadian dollars uh, per annum. So there are 15% of Barbadian households who have incomes below that level. Uh, if we think about it, of course, there is a significant presence of individuals who we would identify as the working poor as well. These are individuals who are employed but their employment does not generate levels of income in excess of the $8,000 standard. Uh, but there is also the unemployed poor. And the unemployed poor are individuals whose joblessness condition is so sustained throughout the course of the year that they're unable to meet the $8,000 standard. Uh, this situation, as, as the minister pointed out a moment ago, is it's particularly pernicious for younger workers. Uh, for 15 to 19 year olds and 20 to 24 year olds, the unemployment rate typically runs at least three times as high as the national average, which means that among younger people, the unemployment rates can run up to 40% of the youth population. Moreover, there is also the problem of the discouraged unemployed, the individuals who have surrendered the task of looking for work because prospects appear so, so grim, which means that the scope of joblessness is even, is even greater. What are the adverse effects of unemployment? Well, the most obvious is the loss of income. But the second is the emotional or, or, the emotional or psychological loss of a connection to a workplace community. Basis. And the third, which may be related, are the adverse mental health effects. Involuntary joblessness and psychological well-being historically have been intimately connected. But there's a, a classic question that's been raised about this connection. It's quite, quite straightforward to assume that individuals who might have poor emotional health would be most likely to be unemployed. And so the causation need not run from unemployment towards poor emotional health, but in the other direction. But in a new study, Timothy Diet, Art Goldsmith, Derek Hamilton, and I attempted to make use of two longitudinal samples 
to try to determine whether or not we could isolate a specific adverse effect of exposure to unemployment on the mental health of, uh, of, of, of a number of, of, uh, of American citizens. So what we did was we tried to identify people who appeared to be resilient at the baseline year of the longitudinal study. These are individuals who reported no mental health issues at the outset of the panel. And what did we find? We found that among those individuals who reported no mental health issues at the outset, those who were exposed to unemployment were three to four times as likely to report mental health issues during the course of the period in which they were studied. Particularly significant was their reports of a set of indicators of clinical depression. So there's a strong body of evidence to support the proposition that people's mental well-being suffer. The source countries for Barbados include, in particular, the United Kingdom and the United States. And between January to August, in the interval 2011 through 2012, in that same span of months in each of the years, there was a 6.8% drop in tourist arrivals from the United States and a 10% drop in tourist arrivals from the UK. Overall, there was a 4.8% drop in total arrivals during the same interval, a 2.1% decline in cruise passengers, and a 10% decline in cruise calls. The significance of the tourist sector can be dramatized by the fact that in any given year, the total number of tourist arrivals typically constitute at least 150% of the total Bayesian population. Therefore, we have a mechanism that resembles the older process, where there is a transmission of business cycle swings from north to south that still influences the performance of the Barbadian economy.